morning uh, and welcome to uh, Dirasat UNDP's information session today on the socio-economic impact analysis of COVID-19 in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Uh, today's seminar is going to be uh, a short one, around one hour, and it will be half an hour of uh, my colleague, uh, UNDP resident representative Stefano Petinato uh, and myself discussing outlining the project uh, and then we will have plenty of time for Q&A uh, uh, which we hope that you uh, take the opportunity to participate in. Uh, without further ado uh, I will introduce uh, Stefano uh, to uh, start presenting this project which we're very excited to have initiated in this last month. And I will just initiate the presentation. Let's go to the... Okay. Stefano, please. Thank you very much, Omar. And good morning to, to everyone. It's great to see pretty good attendance uh, already. We hope for some, some more friends to, to join in in the next minutes. Um, so essentially, what we want to do today uh, from UNDP and Derasat really truly working as a, as a joint team is to uh, uh, break the news and give you, give you an introduction of what we will be working on uh, in the next uh, uh, two, three months with more intensity and then later on possibly into 2021 which is, as the, the slide says, it is a, a socio-economic impact assessment of the, the COVID-19 pandemic in Bahrain. Um, this is, uh, uh, I, I will explain through the slides, essentially the main characteristics, uh, the global and the local context, and, um, and uh, some of the objectives of this initiative. And uh, then uh, Omar will go more into the detail of really the concrete activities that, will, that we expect to take place and that we, ha we have already started working on and laying the grounds for. So in terms of the global context, this uh, socioeconomic impact assessment uh, activity in Bahrain doesn't happen in a vacuum at all. As a matter of fact, the United Nations uh, is working in uh, as of now, in 131 countries, um, 162 countries through 131 country teams of the United Nations country teams that are designing and implementing government support measures on COVID-19 socioeconomic response recovery. So this is essentially uh, the UN teams at the country level in all these countries at the same time that are working together and joining forces also with national uh, partners to lay the, the, the grounds and to implement and help implement a socio-economic response and recover, recovery. Why only socio-economic? Aren't we talking about a health pandemic? Well, I had a, a, a seminar yesterday uh, with the University of Bahrain where I could uh, help to understand the broader dimension of the COVID-19 pandemic. Of course, the immediate and, and the, 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 the biggest facade of the COVID-19 has to do with health. The direct implications of health, the deaths and the, the, uh, the health implications on human beings, the public health uh, emergency that is generating globally. And of course, also the indirect implications on health, on mental health, and, uh, and on, on people with, um, that, that, that end up with uh, symptoms and conditions due to the COVID-19 that are health related. That is a major, major uh, dimension of the COVID-19. And uh, from the side of the U United Nations, we have the World Health Organization, which is fully equipped to work with national counterparts, the ministries of health, just like here in Bahrain, to address the health dimension of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
However, there is a whole other dimension, and this is what we, we will talk about today, which essentially has to do with the social implications and the economic implications of, uh, of the pandemic. So the, the, these are all the, the feed up, feedback effects, the, the, the direct and indirect effects on the economy, on jobs, on remittances, um, uh, on gender and, uh, and, and other dimension on the environment. Um, so uh, we had this, this talk yesterday with the University of Bahrain and I, I, I will be happy also to share elements of that uh, for those of you who are interested in, in another occasion. But essentially, so what we want to do today with, uh, with uh, Derasat and with UNDP, we want to show you the importance uh, or, or what we will be doing to address in Bahrain the socioeconomic uh, dimension of the pandemic. So again, globally, this is being done in many other countries and the work is meant to support national authorities as they develop public health preparedness and response plans. So this is a, a, a complement, and I will say this throughout my presentation uh, and, and with, with Omar, this is complementing what already is being done in Bahrain. It's not going to be a fix all solution, uh, set of solutions or a, a study that is comprehensive but actually is a complementary study to other similar initiatives in Bahrain. Uh, we started in April um, uh, of this year after um, uh, UNDP actually globally uh, set up, this was one month after all the, the pandemic really took off, UNDP set up <coughs> a rapid response facility uh, on, on, to, to promote socioeconomic impact assessments. This was a great opportunity for Bahrain. So we, uh, we, we observed how this uh, rapid response facility was a funding window that we could take uh, advantage of here in Bahrain. And, and since the opening of that rapid response facility, now in over 60 countries, UNDP is taking the technical lead on socioeconomic impact assessment, S-E-I-A's. Uh, you know that at the UN we love acronyms, so bear with me because there's going to be some of these acronyms in my presentation. I try to avoid them, but uh, sometimes it's inevitable. So we see this happening in 60 countries and counting. And uh, going to the next slide, we go into the local context, which where we see that the RRF, the Rapid Response Facility, did take grounds also in Bahrain. We received the funding, uh, UNDP received the, the funding here locally, and we immediately reached out um, to the government and uh, to see who we, we could partner with uh, on this initiative and to, to use these resources. And of course, Terasat came as the leading institution, think tank in Bahrain to work on this. Terasat is fully equipped and has a lot of experience in reporting assessment, analysis, uh, and, uh, and also surveys. So the national authorities responded uh, in terms of the local context. We know that uh, the national authorities, in terms of the, the response to the pandemic, there was a rapid response. Uh, measures were set out at the health, from the health point of view, but also on the, at the, uh, the economic level, there were a lot of uh, stimulus packages that, that went out, some very, very large ones, and also on the, on the social dimensions of the pandemic. So yes, addressing um, the containment and uh, measures, you know, of the contact tracing, of the distancing, and of the isolation and, and all those measures, but also proactively looking at how to resolve some of the dilemmas related at the social level, for instance, with the with the diminishing jobs um, opportunities, with the education um, challenges that emerge, with, you know, with kids not going to school. So there's been a lot of proactivity from national authorities to try to respond to the implications of the, of the, of the pandemic. The overall response uh, uh, to, to, the pan to the pandemic uh, in, in, in addressing all these dimensions inevitably involves a wide range of actors within the government and also out, outside of the government. The government set up the National um, Task Force uh, 
and, and we know that they've, they've been doing really uh, an excellent uh, work in coordination of all the entities involved. And, um, and also there was a lot of inf positive information that went out to the public, which this is key also for individuals to understand how they should behave, how they should not behave. And so this, the stakeholders included uh, government entities, civil society, academia, and private sector. And of course, the United Nations system here in Bahrain is, has been uh, involved and, and ready to help. And the work with Derasat of UNDP is one of the ways in which the United Nations um, is planning to be involved in, in these, these efforts. In this case, it's for the assessment and for the, um, uh, some recommendations that would go to, um, uh, to improve further the response and the recovery. Which takes me to the next slide, uh, thank you, and which is on essentially on the, no, I think that there was one before. Yes, on the objectives um, of the socioeconomic impact assessment in Bahrain. Uh, the, the overarching ob objective, and uh, forgive me if I, if I read this uh, sentence, but this should give you an idea of really what we are trying to do and why we, are, where we, we want to do this. So we want to learn from a rigorous analysis of the socioeconomic impact of the pandemic so as to further improve and target national socioeconomic response measures that can ultimately, and this is the final objective of course, can restore and help recover in an effective and sustainable way. We want to get out of the, this U curve of clearly of, uh, of suffering, of, uh, of uh, the, the, the initial impact of the virus that clearly has very dire consequences on people, on individual lives, losses, uh, but also losses of jobs and also lost opportunities for, for growth in the country and, and other implications. Uh, so we want to basically emerge from this uh, and uh, through this type of analysis that can better inform policies so that we can end up with a better, stronger recovery and so that Bahrain can truly emerge from this uh, in, a, in a way that has perhaps an even stronger uh, future and forward outlook in terms of opportunities. So this is quite ambitious, but we need to be ambitious in this. And this is uh, almost like an opportunity really to, to build better. So what are the, the, the five main um, objectives of the socioeconomic impact assessment that we, we will be working on? We want to number one, enhance the understanding of individual and social behaviors and preferences, contributing to the relevant academic literature and inform policy making. So we may have conversations among us and we, we may agree that some behaviors uh, are good, others are bad, or we may anecdote from the anecdotal point of view know preferences of individuals in Bahrain and use those preferences and, uh, and, and structures to nudge and to influence behaviors. But that would be only anecdotal. What we want to do is to do it scientifically. We want to use uh, empirical information to make better decisions. So that's number one. Number two is to provide a set of forward-looking recommendations that will be available for policymakers in Bahrain and possibly beyond Bahrain uh, to contribute to a wider use of evidence-based policy. What do we mean by this? I mean, uh, we, we want policymakers to have this menu of recommendations that hopefully we'll be able to come up with so that they can um, make better decisions. And when I say even beyond Bahrain, I mean, this is UNDP. We have presence in over 160 countries around the world. And we, what we would want to do is to be able to disseminate this and share it with, uh, with other offices uh, around the world so that perhaps there could be even south-south cooperation and lessons learned that from Bahrain go into other countries, just like we're doing and we're learning from things that are happening in Kuwait and Saudi Arabia and uh, Emirates uh, and, and other countries, of course. We also want to improve the Kingdom of Bahrain's homegrown capacity 
to conduct these kind of assessments. This has always been the case in past collaborations that we've already had with uh, Derasat. Uh, Derasat is a growing team. Uh, in my opinion, a very, very competent team of, uh, of, of, of experts. And so hopefully through this collaboration, we can further improve uh, the capacity of, of, uh, of Derasat and also of other operators in, in Bahrain. Uh, number four, we want to, and I mentioned this already, we will complement and inform existing and future impact analysis and assessments conducted nationally, I forgot to put that, but also regionally and worldwide. <coughs> Just want to mention one, I receive uh, the, the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry periodically is making economic assessments of the impact of COVID-19. Those are great. And those should continue and we are using them and we will use them. And I hope that what we produce also will be able to inform so that we, we complement our efforts and, uh, and build further knowledge. Finally, last but not least, from the point of view of the United Nations and UNDP, we, we always work by maintaining the tenets of the 2030 <coughs> agenda. This is not just to add it because we have to, on the contrary, this uh, we, we the leave no one behind underlying principles of the agenda are very present and we, we, we want to address population groups that we know are suffering the most from this and, um, and ensure that the, that the measures are always inclusive to them and, um, and, uh, and all the tenets that underline the sustainable development agenda, including environmental sustainability, clean energy, behaviors, that will help Bahrain to be even stronger and more sustainable after we emerge from the pandemic. So these are the five underlying objectives with the, with the headline objective that I mentioned in, in the beginning of the slide. I think uh, uh, I'm, I'm done on my side of the presentation. So in terms of the scope, we're going to have Dr. Omar who will walk through the, the, the components and the activities um, of this uh, joint initiative, UNDP Derasa. Over to you, Omar, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and I'd, just before I get into the details of the activities, I'd like to uh, reaffirm what uh, Stefano said regarding the strength of the partnership between Derasat and UNDP. We've uh, worked on many projects in the past and we're looking forward to working on this project and on many other projects in the future. Um, the, we have four primary classes of activity that we'll be doing under the umbrella of the, SE, of the SEA. Uh, the first is surveys. Now these surveys come, uh, they will be running surveys, national surveys and small scale surveys in a variety of areas to uh, evaluate important aspects of the impact of the coronavirus. These include health aspects, economic aspects, educational aspects, um, financial aspects, you know, probably like me, many of you have been actively switching to uh, contactless payment and <clears throat> we want to study how these sort of transitions are occurring uh, uh, to gain a better understanding. Uh, we'll also be, uh, we'll be doing this by building on Derasat's uh, uh, existing capacity in conducting national surveys. We've done uh, numerous surveys in the past on issues such as the Bahraini elections, on, uh, uh, on education, on, uh, on, uh, on, and even on, on COVID, we've already done a few surveys. So we'll be leveraging our existing expertise in those areas uh, to conduct additional surveys. <coughs> uh, Moreover, I should add, uh, the questions that we'll be using to run the survey, some of which will be so <coughs> questions that we have organically devised uh, and that are very specific to Bahrain. But in addition to that, we will be selecting questions from any one of the numerous uh, surveys that are being conducted by UNDP and partners all across the world. And this will be an important part of benchmarking our, uh, the, the assessments that we have for Bahrain and getting an understanding of how Bahrain has been affected compared to other countries. The second class of activity that we'll be doing is interviews. We will be convening uh, a large uh, committee of stakeholder representatives uh, and some of you may have already uh, been reached, heard from us uh, as we seek to uh, uh, gather the, uh, the names and the individuals and seek their approval. Uh, <clears throat> once we have this, these stakeholders will cover all the different sectors that you could imagine 
will have a, a, a role to play in, in, in both in being impacted and in, and in devising solutions and countermeasures to COVID. When we're talking about government sector, civil society sector, private sector, think tanks, and so on and so forth, uh, and, and the international community, both the UN organizations and various uh, representatives, diplomatic representatives of other countries. Uh, and we will use this committee uh, in a variety of fashions, the first of which will be to conduct uh, periodical bilateral interviews with the uh, members uh, in order to gather data that complements the data that we, gather, that we obtain from the surveys. So for example, uh, we will get lots of quantitative data uh, and we will be launching a survey today, hopefully, or on the first act aspect of the coronavirus. And so please, uh, if you're following us, uh, follow our website and follow our uh, uh, social media feeds, both the UNDP and Derasat, and you will find links to that survey coming, uh, being produced, coming out today, this afternoon, hopefully. Uh, and that data will be primarily quantitative in nature. Uh, and we were using these interviews to gather qualitative data that helps, that gets us, allows us to drill deeper into the quantitative insights that we gain from the national surveys. The interviews will be conducted probably uh, uh, by Zoom and other uh, uh, video remote methods for the time being, although hopefully by the time we uh, uh, reach October or November, we hope to be able to conduct some interviews face to face. At the same time, in, 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 in parallel to these bilateral interviews and to the um, surveys that we conduct, we will be doing roundtable discussions. Uh, uh, some of which will contain small, maybe a handful of uh, uh, stakeholder representatives, uh, some of which will be much broader. Uh, and the goal of these uh, roundtable discussions will be to complement the data we obtain bilaterally uh, with multilateral interactive data. Uh, as you all know from your own day-to-day -day experiences, certain aspects uh, uh, only become uh, evident uh, when people have the chance to discuss them uh, and when we have the opportunity to uh, listen to each other's ideas and listen to each other's perspectives that will surely enrich the insights that we gain uh, from the uh, alternative methods and again uh, due to the uh, uh, current pandemic for the at the beginning these will be uh, primarily done remotely but hopefully if things take a turn for the better we can uh, we can convene some of these uh, panel discussions or roundtable discussions and stake and focus group meetings in Darasat and, 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 and in UN House and, and other areas too. The final uh, element of the, uh, of the project in terms of the activities will be secondary data analysis. Um, as Stefano mentioned, there are many uh, entities that are already conducting their own data gathering exercises, such as the Bahrain Chamber for Commerce and Industry, and will be keen to analyze the data that these, or these uh, projects have, have yielded and published and, and made available to researchers and scholars. In addition to that, there are many entities that we have reached out to uh, and requested data. We'll be conducting our own web scraping, data extraction uh, exercises using from the internet. Uh, and we'll be using this to, to gain additional complementary insights into how all sorts of uh, organizations and entities have been, uh, and individuals have been affected by this, uh, by this terrible pandemic. The, once we gather the data, and there will be a lot of data, uh, uh, we've actually already managed to secure certain amounts of data. Uh, we will be uh, a central tenet of the project will be that we will make all our analysis publicly available, both in Arabic and in English um, at the same time. Um, <clears throat> initially, this will be in the form of reports and briefs, which we will make publicly available uh, on our website and on the UNDP's website, uh, and we'll be circulating via social media. Uh, and over time, we will, comp we will uh, reinforce these uh, reports and briefs with uh, academic uh, scholarly research, uh, so Stefano mentioned that this project will be extending into 2021. One of the reasons for that will be that compiling these findings and, and, and putting them in a, in a scientific uh, guise will take a, a considerable, considerable, more, considerable amount of time. Uh, and that's why we're excited to continue working with UNDP on this issue through 2021 uh, as we, as we uh, publish our research in international peer-reviewed uh, journals, which will again be made publicly available to complement all the shorter reports and briefs 
uh, that the project produces during the next three to four months. And with that, uh, I would like to, that concludes the uh, material that Stefano and I were going to present. And now I would like to open the floor up for Q&A. Uh, Omar, so, can I add, can yes, I add please, one thing? Thanks so much. Uh, there's just one, one non-minor detail that I wanted to add that essentially Derasat and UNDP uh, collaborate, but in doing so, we, we inevitably work with our networks and with our respective networks. Derasat has a very broad uh, network of, of cooperation with, with other entities similar to Derasat and uh, the, the, uh, the outreach to the government, of course. And but, uh, UNDP, uh, our strongest network is not only our UNDP country offices internationally, but our, our sister agencies that operate in Bahrain. UNDP uh, uh, is one of the UN entities in Bahrain, and uh, we already had, have held talks with other UN entities that work with Bahrain that are going to be uh, essential um, uh, players in this initiative, in the socioeconomic impact assessment, that because they, they hold the, the knowledge and the technical capacity to help us in the analysis and um, in, uh, in drafting, drafting and crafting the, the recommendations at the end. I'm not even, I mean, it's inevitable that uh, entities like UNICEF and UNESCO, IOM and ILO and many others are going to be, uh, UNEP, are going to be all partners in, in this initiative. So I, I just also wanted to mention that because we don't work in, a, in, a, in isolation. We, we definitely will be reaching out to draw on the knowledge of, of these additional partners. Over Omar, thank you. Thank you. So <clears throat> the first question we have is from Khaled Al Khatab, who's asking about the nature of the economic recovery. Uh, is it U-shaped? So not you say he's claiming that it's not U-shaped or L-shaped and, and is also drawing attention to the fact that uh, there are, uh, Bahrain is a unique case uh, that differs to Kuwait UAE and Saudi Arabia in population and in economy. And I absolutely agree. That's uh, uh, the, the primary, uh, as Stefano mentioned at the start, these analyses are going on in uh, around 160 countries. Uh, and there's a reason why it's happening in at the country level uh, to complement the efforts made by UNDP and other scholarly uh, and, and, and research institutions at the global level, because the, uh, uh, there are so many country to country differences. And in fact, there are even within country differences, uh, although even though Bahrain is quite small, uh, uh, we, all we all have important differences which we, which we hope to draw attention to between, for example, the impact on citizens and the impact on migrants, um, on the impact between men and the impact on women uh, uh, and all sorts of other uh, subcategories. So that's an essential uh, uh, element of the project. Uh, and, and we hope that with the data that we gather, um, both uh, through surveys and through interviews and through other ga data gathering exercises, we'll be able to uh, deliver scientific quality insights uh, into how these different, uh, uh, how the pandemic is affecting all these different groups. Uh, they have a second question from an anon anonymous attendee, which I'll pose to Stefano, um, which is, uh, are the timelines for achieving the sustainable development goals affected by COVID-19? Can a country's response to the pandemic be applied to the rest of, I, I, I say it's the country, but I assume it means the world. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for the question. Um, well, uh, this is one of the biggest crises, and I'm talking about the world, necess not necessarily about Bahrain, but uh, clearly the the impact on nearly all dimensions um, uh, has been quite negative from the past. And uh, and I'm I'm using a euphemism by saying quite negative. It has been catastrophic in some dimensions, and maybe we haven't even seen. The, uh, probably we haven't even seen the, 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 the worst part of it. Uh, we have entire swaths of countries and parts of the world that are trying to cope with the, something that is much bigger than any of their health infrastructures are able to contain or respond to, let alone the economy continuing and, and generating jobs and even basic needs of the population are not met anymore due to the pandemic. So, Essentially, uh, yes, the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, will be, are being already affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, there's going to be uh, a need for 
an enormous effort uh, underway, which is financial, but also uh, a, a change uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the use of resources that were initially allocated to some sectors so that the pandemic uh, major um, and most weakened sectors can be supported. Something that is being done very actively in Bahrain through the, the stimulus packages, and this is what we want to see in many other countries so that the, the economy comes back and, and floats back. And, and at the same time, we take into account the impact on all the other dimensions um, of the SDGs, if you will, you know, education, nutrition, um, the, and the environment and gender. So uh, we will, as the United Nations, we're being equipped to help countries to, um, to cope with the recovery. And sometimes we say to build back better uh, so that the countries uh, come back and get back on track towards the, the achievement of the SDGs in the year 2030, which is rapidly approaching. We're only 10 years away from that. And then you ask, and can a country's response to the pandemic be applied to, to the rest of the world? Well, uh, this is something we were asked also yesterday in the presentation at the University of Bahrain. I, I tend to stay away from models successful models that apply in a cookie cutter way from one country to the other, that generally does not work. One recipe for a country is highly unlikely that it can be perfectly transferred to another country and work. And unfortunately, that is done quite, uh, it has been done in the past. I think that the art is to adopt certain principles of recovery and then to apply them at the country level and localize them and adapt them to the country needs and characteristics. The previous uh, question was, Bahrain is not like Kuwait, UAE and Saudi Arabia. We completely agree with that. Nobody is in disagreement, of course. We want to apply any response in a way that is relevant to the country context, population size, economy, culture and the like. So. That's what we will be working on, uh, hopefully, also with this initiative. But, uh, Omar. Uh, yes, uh, we have a, uh, an additional question, which is a common question from uh, Ahmed Boasali and uh, Raji Uni Krishnan, um, which part of it I'll answer and part I'll have a, hand over to Stefano. So, is there a mechanism uh, to make the research findings actionable? And how will these insights influence policy in Bahrain's national strategy and relatedly from uh, Raji? Uh, when will the recommendations be put forward to the policymakers? So we have uh, the communication strategy for the research, uh, for the output, uh, has several dimensions. First of all, the stakeholder uh, committee has uh, significant representation from various government entities, all the relevant ones that you'd imagine. So that's one direct line of communication between uh, what's going on in the project and the and the relevant government entities. And secondly, as I mentioned, all the research will be published and will be made publicly available and will be circulated in memoranda to the relevant entities should they wish to uh, uh, base any of their decisions uh, on, on any of the insights that we that we garner. Uh, uh, the additional question for you, Stefano, is when, when you said the funding window was a great opportunity for Bahrain, could you please explain that further? Well, uh, the funding is seed funding. Um, it's just resources that come towards Bahrain, which is uh, generally not the case. I mean, the way the United work Nation works in Bahrain, at least UNDP for sure, is that we work on local resources and, and try to strengthen local capacity. But uh, the resources in this case come to Bahrain because uh, at a time when resources are very scarce, uh, and, uh, and they come as catalytic resources because here we can do a lot with the very little resources and that's what we're trying to do and we're leveraging on Derasat's uh, terrific uh, capacity to, on analysis and on surveys and these resources are to basically potentiate and, 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 and catalyze even more those, uh, uh, those capacities that exist here through Derasat and UNDP and the rest of the UN uh, here in Bahrain. So we hope to make the most of, uh, of these funds. And um, it's, the jury is out whether they will be used uh, well or not. We surely are going to put all our energy to, to make the most of them. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have uh, uh, an intervention from Dr. Najat. Uh, 
will be coming online one moment. Hello, Assalamualaikum. Alaikum Assalam. Tafadhal, Doctor. Marhaba. Hello, 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 Stefan. How are you doing? Hi. How are you? Yeah. Uh, two, two, two days in a row we spoke together. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Doctor. It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, uh, well done in this project. I was wondering why this is not happening in Bahrain. I was because uh, this is uh, it's a need, a must. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, um, you know, I did something similar to what you are doing. Uh, I would like, to, if, if if you are interested, I'd be very much interested to be involved in this kind of a project. You know, and we can share and we can you know discuss further. Uh, through my office, which I just initiated to speak uh, for uh, sustainability consultation. Uh, one, of, one of the things that I would like you also to know that uh, one of the main things that you will uh, face in this kind of a project is that you need to initiate kind of a, um, uh, focal groups or, you know, in, 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 the, in the entities or in the firms. Because that's what we face, that uh, the people try to, you know, to... Uh, I don't know. Are they are they going to? Uh, are, can I say that they they would like to you know um, hide or to uh, ignore or to say you know that we don't have a problem or there is no a great impact of the COVID nineteen and we are doing great. No, we you need to have kind of uh, more transparent people that uh, that they can say really what we are facing. Without this, you know, uh, it will be like any other, you know, report that it will be taken or recommendation, and it will not have a great impact on a policy, you know, making. So maybe, maybe initiating this kind of focal groups and in, in the in the firms or entities, you know, that you are going to tackle, uh, it will be a good good start for you. And as I said, if you would like, I can be, you know, uh, I can take part in this project as well. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, Stefano, would you like to respond? Yes. Thank you. It's, it's always a pleasure to have uh, uh, colleagues and uh, academics of the, of, of the caliber of Doctora to, to come in and to participate into these, these events, but even more to provide recommendations. I, 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 look, these things, as you know well, we could have just sat in a room, virtual, uh, and just written recommendations, you know, and just uh, dr drawn on some data here and there, put it down, make a nice shiny book, and then send it around. This is really not what we wanted to do at all. Uh, um, Dr. Omar uh, explained also in detail how we really want to harvest the information by, through empirical means as well as we can with the limited resources that we have. But we do also have today a lot of technological resources that help us a lot. Many of them are free even to draw on information from the ground. And we have wonderful collaborations like from, from even from some embassies here in Bahrain that are, have helped us to translate parts of the survey so that they can have more reach. And all of that does not necessarily need resources. It needs goodwill and it needs uh, reaching out. Uh, the focus groups, yes, absolutely. We will be working on those. We will have structured interviews, focus groups, stakeholder, uh, periodic uh, stakeholders meetings. So we look forward to then truly gathering all of that information and, and, and sharing it uh, with, uh, with all of you and, and more broadly in a systematic way. And, and we will tap on, on knowledge and wisdom like yours, Doctora, so that we can, uh, we can make even uh, a better product. So we will be in touch for sure. Uh, thank you, Doctora Najata. We have a question from uh, another uh, a dear friend of the UN network, Prof uh, Professor Asma Abah Sain, who, uh, who made a big contribution to the VNR, I believe, in 2018. Uh, and she says, uh, is there a possibility for PhD students to be involved in the study? We, we, we welcome uh, any scholars uh, uh, who wish to make a contribution. Uh, uh, on the contrary, please feel free to contact us uh, through any of the channels, for our emails, our telephones, our websites, and, and, and if you have specific proposals or if you would like to contribute in any way, uh, we're very happy to discuss these things. The, the, this project is, 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 is 
by its very nature, uh, uh, inclusive, uh, uh, and and we uh, and we would be more than happy to uh, receive extra hands on deck to help us analyze the uh, huge amounts of data that we hope to collect. So certainly, please feel free to reach out to us, and we'll be happy to uh, to work with anyone. Um, let's see. Q &A. From Dana. Yes, Dana Hamza, uh, who says, will you be comparing the socioeconomic impact associated with previous crises, such as the global financial crisis and other health crises to identify the magnitude of the socioeconomic impact of COVID-19? Uh, yes, so I'll start and then Stephanie can add. So uh, this is one of the reasons we're, um, so we're conducting, we're drawing questions from existing pools or banks of questions, which were used in previous uh, crises and unfortunately there's been many crises uh, uh, to deploy these tools uh, and so and one of the reasons we do that is so that we can carry first of all conduct cross-sectional comparisons so comparing Bahrain now to other countries now and also longitudinal ones Bahrain now to other to Bahrain previously and to other other crises uh, we'll be uh, doing this both at the macroeconomic level uh, subject to data availability and at the microeconomic level so these are all the uh, this is very much in line with what we want to achieve and when Stefano mentioned at the beginning the capacity building, the, the intention here is, is for uh, the, this process to be able to continue uh, uh, for many years. Uh, uh, and hopefully there won't be a need for it in terms of crisis, but inevitably we do expect crises uh, uh, to emerge in the future. And in that situation, we'll be ready to uh, use the same methods and to, uh, and to conduct further longitudinal analysis and comparisons. Stefano, did you want to add anything to that? Yes, um, thank you, Dana. Of course, from Dana, we could only get uh, a really great stimulating question. It's very difficult, uh, the science of uh, learning from past prices, right? And, uh, and, to, and, and to, to, to use those lessons so that we can be better equipped today. But I mean, arguably what is happening today and has been happening since uh, the beginning of the year globally, is, is, is difficult to compare to any previous crisis. Uh, they mentioned the 1917 Spanish flu uh, as, as a similar one, because what, what is happening is that there is the synchronicity of uh, 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 economic crisis, of health crisis, and global dimension of these crises. So, Generally, when we had previous health pandemics, they were localized, just a few countries. So other countries could come in help and the economies of the affected countries could hinge on, uh, on, on the strength that existed in other parts of the world. This is not the case now. In, 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 in previous financial crises, uh, we didn't necessarily have the health dimension hitting so hard the economies. And so we just, we just had a financial crisis that needed, needed to recovery through financial um, measures and through uh, gradual and, and slow reconstruction through issuing debt. Uh, but what we're seeing today again is this perfect storm, and I'm talking globally, not necessarily about Bahrain, of a crisis that affects basically all the countries in the world to different measures, but all of them a crisis that affects so many different dimensions of development. And I'm, I, I explained that yesterday in, in the lecture with the University of Bahrain. I mean, all the SDGs pretty much are being affected, just to mention, explain it somehow. And at the same time, it's, it's a crisis that, that has a magnitude that is very difficult to cope with and to compare to what has happened in the past. So clearly there will be lessons from from past crises, maybe there would be also be lessons between countries that are doing well, the New Zealands and, and others, and, and how we can learn that from here. But a lot of the lessons are going to have to be in uh, homegrown through capacity, through resources that exist in Bahrain and, uh, and, and, making, uh, in, and making it hopefully in 2021, inshallah, um, uh, stronger and uh, with a full recovery. Thank you, Dana, for that question, and Stefano for the response. Um, I, I think that wraps up the questions and interventions that we have at the moment. Uh, and with that, I would like to thank everybody who attended and, and who interacted. Uh, and we look forward to uh, having a few more uh, such 
uh, briefings uh, uh, in the in the coming months in addition to the uh, larger events which involve uh, gathering uh, uh, you know ran, uh, uh, focus group uh, focus group style meetings which involve gathering data from people directly oh we do have a uh, Oh no, there's a thank you <laughs> from uh, mm -hmm. from Raji, uh, and so uh, we look forward to seeing you again in the future, and wish you an enjoyable weekend. And don't forget to uh, participate in the survey once that's available and that's out online in, in the coming 24 hours. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Stay tuned.